Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer, and you know, I get a question a lot in the podcasts and things like that about how do you pack a sling bag? What do you put in a sling bag? Well, it's really a personal thing, but um, you know, I'll show you what I have in my sling bag, probably more than most people would carry, and then you should really modify yours as you see fit because it's a very personal decision. But I'll take this off and I'll show you what's in mine. First of all, water bottle or coffee on the outside. I have my floatants stuck on here. I have my tippet bar on the outside with my snips. And then a really handy feature is you can grab your forceps when the sling bag is behind you because it's on the strap and that's a magnetic holder in there, a magnetic snap. And then you can also put zingers and things like that here. I don't use it, some people might. So let's take a look at what I can carry in this guide sling. First of all, I'm often taking pictures. So I have in a waterproof bag, a full-size DSLR in a waterproof bag. Heavy. Most people won't carry that. You might put your rain jacket in there, your lunch or whatever. Um, and then one of my bigger fly boxes I'll put in with the camera. Now, inside here there are some mesh pockets where I have my leader wallet and some lens cleaning pads for both my camera and my sunglasses or my glasses. There's a zippered pocket in here where I have a headlamp, uh, butt material in case I want to lengthen my leader, cider material for Euro nymphing. I've got this time of year I've got a couple of hand warmer packs. I've got a roll of duct tape because you could never go anywhere without duct tape. I have an old insect seine this was made by Orvis probably 30 years ago. There's actually impregnated bamboo uh, rods from scraps from the rod shop. And I use this to seine bugs from the water to see what's hatching. A thermometer for checking the water temperature and a catch and release. I don't use this catch and release tool much, but I told myself I want to try to use it more. So I've been carrying it with me. So that's the first big pocket. I think I got it all other than the dirt and leaves and stuff like that. And then we have a pocket here, slightly smaller. This is where I usually put most of my fly boxes, the ones I'm going to use most. So I have my streamer box, my nymph box, which looks much better early in the season than it will in another couple weeks. I have my smaller dry flies here. I have my big streamers. I, I don't like carrying one of those big giant streamer boxes, so I just put them in a baggie. So that's that compartment. Piece of paper, a couple old ratty flies that I forgot about. And then on the outside, I put my stuff that I might want in a hurry. So I've got fluorocarbon in various sizes. Now if I'm fishing a lot of nymphs and streamers, I'll replace my nylon here with the fluorocarbon and put it on there, but I keep my fluorocarbon inside. Assorted strike indicators of all sorts of varieties because I like experimenting with them. One kind of soft lead, sink putty. Two kinds of sink putty, uh, New Zealand strike indicator yarn, which I love. A stomach pump for seeing what the trout are eating some uh, non-toxic split shot, some strike putty, which we don't sell anymore, but I sometimes use for small nymphs and things. Uh, a little insect net for grabbing uh, spinners out of the air. This thing unfolds and has a little mesh net that you can catch bugs with, the weird things that fly fishers do. And some camo non-toxic shot. 
So that's it. That's all the stuff I carry in my guide sling. What you carry might vary, and I urge you to set it up however you want. But um, this guide sling will take a lot of stuff. It stays behind you, stays out of the way, and when you need it, you just roll it around and you got it handy. Mm -hmm.